All right, folks, gather round. Today, we're diving into a topic that's hotter than a jalapeno on a summer day, climate change. But not just any climate change, oh no. We're talking about a brand spanking new study that might have just thrown a wrench in our understanding of how quickly we're warming the planet. Spoiler alert, it's worse than we thought. So, let's set the scene. Imagine you're a scientist at the University of Western Australia's Oceans Institute. You're there, probably wearing a lab coat that's seen better days, sipping on what can only be described as a questionable cup of coffee, and you've got a sponge in your hand. No, not the kind you use to clean your dishes, but a long-lived Caribbean sclero sponges. Yes, you heard that right. These little oceanic wonders are more than just the backdrop of a tropical vacation. They're like nature's time capsules, preserving historical ocean temperatures. Now, what do you do with a sponge? You study it, of course. And what did our brave scientists discover? Drum roll, please. They suspect we've already surpassed the critical global warming threshold of 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. And they think it might have happened as early as 20 to 20. Yes, you heard that right. 2020. The year we were all trying to survive a pandemic, and apparently the planet was trying to survive us too. According to these researchers, the global temperatures could be around 1.7 degrees Celsius above those cozy pre-industrial averages. But hold your horses. Not everyone is throwing confetti and celebrating this revelation. Some scientists are raising their eyebrows and saying, whoa, there buddy, are we sure about this? They argue that just because a sponge in the Caribbean says it's hot, doesn't mean the whole world is feeling the heat in the same way. It's like saying your friend's living room is sweltering because they forgot to turn on the AC while you're sitting comfortably in your cool basement. But let's get back to the implications here. Malcolm McCulloch, the lead researcher, is waving his arms around like a maniac, emphasizing that this research has moved the timeline for emissions reductions forward by at least a decade. That's right, folks. We thought we had until 2030 to get our act together, but now it's looking more like we need to start making changes yesterday. Imagine if we treated our climate goals like a New Year's resolution. I'll start exercising in 2025. Oh, honey, that's not going to cut it anymore. We need to be more like, I'll start exercising right after I finish this pizza, because let's face it, Procrastination is a slippery slope, and so is ignoring climate change. The urgency of this situation can't be overstated. We're at a point where we need to take immediate action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. It's like we're all on a sinking ship, and instead of bailing water, we're arguing about whether we should use a bucket or a sponge. Spoiler alert! The sponge is probably not going to help us much in this scenario. So what's the takeaway here? Well, it's clear that we need to get our act together and start treating climate change like the serious issue it is. We can't just sit around waiting for the next study to tell us what we already know, that we're in deep trouble. But here's where it gets interesting. The debate is still ongoing. Some experts are calling for more data to validate these claims before we all start panicking and changing our diets to only eat kale and tofu. And who can blame them? It's tough to accept that we might be living in a reality where we need to change our habits for the sake of the planet. And let's be honest, change is hard. It's like trying to convince your cat to take a bath. You know it's for their own good, but they look at you like you've just suggested they jump into a volcano. But change is necessary if we want to ensure a habitable planet for future generations. We owe it to them to take immediate measures, even if it means giving up some of our creature comforts. So, what can we do? 
Well, for starters, we can reduce our carbon footprint. That means driving less, using public transport, or even better, walking or biking. I know, I know, biking might not be your thing, but think of it this way. You get to feel the wind in your hair and look cool while doing it. Plus, it's a great way to get in shape. We can also support renewable energy sources, solar panels, wind turbines. These are our friends. They're like the superheroes of the energy world, swooping in to save us from the evil clutches of fossil fuels. And let's not forget about spreading awareness. Talk to your friends, family, and even that random person you meet at the coffee shop. Share the facts. Who knows? Maybe you'll spark a conversation that leads to a climate revolution. In conclusion, while the news from our sponge studying scientists might sound dire, it's crucial to remember that we still have the power to make a difference. The clock is ticking and time is running short, but together we can tackle this challenge head on. So let's roll up our sleeves, grab our sponges, both the cleaning kind and the oceanic kind, and get to work. The planet is counting on us.